Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what we're going to talk about is the intro to rational algebraic solving. If we haven't already gone over this in class, here's your first intro piece. And let's take a look. Rational algebraic is no more different than regular solving. If I have x plus 2 equals 7, all I have to do is get all the numbers over to one side. So I'm going to say minus 2, minus 2, x equals 5. Now, <clears throat> If I have, on the other hand, number 2, x over 7 equals 3 over 5, there's two ways I could go about doing this. Method 1 is simply to cross multiply. And to cross multiply, I'm going to take x times 5 equals 7 times 3, which is 5x equals 21. Not all bad. And then I divide both sides by 5. x equals 21 over 5. The alternative would be as if I have x over 7 equals 3 over 5. Do each piece separately. Since this is divide by 5, let's multiply by uh, 5. Multiply by 5. So you have this is divide by 7. So let's multiply both sides by 7. Here and here cancel out. Here here and here cancel out, leaving 5x equals 21, x equals 21 over 5. So whether I do it by cross multiplication or whether I do it using method number 2, which is traditional solving, makes no difference. Now, let's move on to something a bit more challenging. <clears throat> let's do something where it is x over 3 plus x plus 2 over 3 equals 1 over 2. So let's make this problem number 3. Now in this case, we can't just cross multiply because I have two whole fractions over here. I need to get these fractions together so it's one fraction equals one fraction. Well, the nice thing is since they are multiplied, uh, I'm sorry, added together, and they're both over the same denominator, well, let's see here. If I have one-third plus one-third, the answer is two-thirds because one plus one is two, and the three is the common denominator. So in the same way, x plus x plus two over common denominator of three equals one-half. x plus x is two x plus two all over three equals one-half. Now I have one fraction equals one fraction. I can cross multiply. <clears throat> and by doing so, I get, uh, well, I better show you the intermediate step here. 2 times 2x plus 2 equals 3. So 4x plus 4, by giving away the 2, equals 3. At this point, it's straight up solving. Minus 4 minus 4. 4x equals negative 1. Oh, rats, I'm not done yet because the whole point is to get x by itself. So if, to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 4 both ways. x equals negative 1 fourth. There you go. So in this case, straight up solving, here we cross multiplied. Here I had to combine some pieces before I cross multiplied and solve. Let's go down and take a look at number 4. Number 4, <clears throat> 6 over x plus 3 equals 5 over x. Now, this is a bit more challenging because, A, the x's are on the bottom. Second of all, I got x's on both sides. Um, so it's just kind of a mess. Well, first things first. Let's get all the x's to one side. Now, since this is attached by plus and this is positive, the easiest way to move it is minus 6 over x, minus 6 over x. Now, those two are going to cancel out leaving 3 over here. And the nice thing is, since we have common denominators, all we have to do is take 5 minus 6, negative 1, over a common denominator of x. At this point, I'm ready to do cross multiplication. Put that over 1. 3x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 third. Okay, not too bad. Uh, in this case, because the x was on the bottom, cross-multiplying worked out really nicely because that meant it went up on top. Remember the key thing is when you cross-multiply two fractions, it's something equals something else, okay? Something equals something else. Now let's do something even more difficult. 
6 over 2 plus 3x minus 1 over 2 equals 5 over 7. Here we go. In this case, oh, let's not make that 2. Let's make it 12. Here we go. In this case, I don't have common denominators, but that's not a real challenge. <clears throat> One of two things. Either I can take this fraction and put it over here and find common denominators this way. 3x minus 1 over 12 equals 5 sevenths minus 6 over 2. And now find common denominators to 2, 7, 7. And I get 10 minus 42 all over 14 equals 3x minus 1 over 12. In which case, I have 3x minus 1 over 12 equals negative 32 over 14. <clears throat> cross multiply, and I come up with, uh, let's see here, 3, 42x minus 14 equals, whoa, 12 times 14, 12 times 14, that's kind of a lot, um, and I don't have my, where's my calculator, here it is, 12, I'm sorry, 12 times 32, 12 times 32, there we go, 384, and add 14 to both sides. <clears throat> so I have 42x equals uh, 384 plus 14, 398. Then I divide both sides by 42. Cancel, cancel. 398 divided by 42. Answer is x equals 9.476, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <clears throat> Now, this got big numbers and ugly, but the process itself wasn't hard. I simply combined the two fractions, found common denominators, and cross-multiplied and solved. Here, I could also do the same thing. Method two for this would be, let's go right down and find common denominators here. That's a 12, so I need some sixes. So I have 36 over 12 plus 3x minus 1 over 12 equals 5 over 7. Now let's put them together. 3x plus 35 over 12 equals 5 over 7. At this point, cross multiply and solve. So 21x plus 49 times 5. So I have 35 times 7. Answer is 245 equals 60 minus 245 minus 245. <clears throat> And I get 21x equals negative 185. Divide both sides by 21. And I get the same thing again, or I should. Now, let's do one last example, and then we'll be done. The last example would be where I have something like this. 6 over x plus x over x plus 2 equals 5 over 6. In this case, I have to find common denominators, but the denominators are variables, and they're different. Well, just like if I took one-third plus one-fourth, I have to come over here and say, well, together is the only way they work. And so I'm going to need to multiply this by four and this by three. So I end up with four plus three all over 12. Here... <clears throat> Since there's no way to turn this into this or this into this, I need an x plus 2 here, and I need an x here. So if I do all this, I come up with x squared plus 2x on the bottom, because I have to give it away. And up top, I have 6x plus 12 plus x squared equals 5 over 6. Again, I'm down to one fraction equals another fraction, so therefore all I have to do is Cross multiply 5x squared plus 10x because I give the 5 away equals 36x plus 72 plus 6x squared. Now, weirdly, you have a bunch of x squareds and x's, so you need to get everything together. So minus 5x squared minus 5x squared leaves 1x squared. Minus 10x, minus 10x, leaves plus 26x, and then 72. Now, at this point, what do we have to do? Factor. We're going to have to factor. Now, 
Uh, 72, uh, 20 or 36 and two, uh, you got 472 divided by four, 18, so four and 18 is not going to work. Uh, 372 divided by three, 72, no, that's not going to work. I can't come up with anything that allows me to do this. I don't know. Maybe there is something, but I don't know. So in this case, A equals 1, B equals 26, C equals 72. And so I would say opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of 26 squared minus 4 times 1 times 72 all over 2 times 1 and finish solving. So that is Chapter 7. That's that rational algebraic solving, giving it a whirl. So take a look at that, see what you can come up with.